Ah yes, AMD, the CPU and graphics card you buy when you can't afford Intel or Nvidia. But is that all about to change? Yes, I think it is actually, because AMD just made a major announcement about their latest Ryzen CPU line, which supposedly has the same performance as Intel's top i7 chips at half the price. Could it be so? Can you have your cake and eat it too? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about just that and what the deal is with these new CPUs and the effects it might have on the CPU industry going forward. So first of all, let's go over what Ryzen is. Ryzen is AMD's new brand name for their new CPU series. And this is supposedly gonna be three tiers, which are named the Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 3. And I'm sure this was done on purpose, but you can think of these as similar to Intel CPU tiers, the i7, the i5, and the i3 processors, with the Ryzen 7 and the i7 at the top of both. And within each tier, there will be several CPUs to choose from. So there's gonna be multiple Ryzen 7s, just like there's multiple i7s. And the ones we're gonna focus on today is the Ryzen 7, because AMD just had a press conference announcing these, and I mean, come on, we really only care about the best anyway. So let's get specific, shall we? AMD announced three new CPUs, all of them in the Ryzen 7 top tier. And these are the 1700, the 1700X, and the 1800X, with the 1800 being at the top. And what's so exciting about them? Well, for one thing, they all have eight cores and therefore 16 threads. But more importantly, all of these either match or exceed some of Intel's highest end chips yet have lower price points, much lower. For example, let's take a look at the 1800X, the top dog in the Ryzen series right now. This one has a 3.6 gigahertz clock and a 4.0 boost, and that's at 95 watts. AMD compared this to Intel's 6900K, which is also eight core, with up to a four gigahertz boost as well. Now, when running a single thread benchmark, they actually tie. And when running in a multi-thread benchmark, the 1800X beat the 6900K by 9%. But here's the kicker. The Intel 6900K currently costs over $1,000, while the 1800X will cost $499, literally half the price for the same or better performance. Now, of course, I need to point out that this is not Intel's highest end i7 CPU. They also have the i7-6950X, which has 10 cores and would most certainly beat out the 1800X. But I should also point out that the price of that one is uh, $1,700. So to get better performance than the AMD's top of the line, you would have to spend literally three times more on Intel. Now let's look at one step down, the 1700X. This one is also eight cores, 16 threads, this time with a slightly lower clock of 3.4 gigahertz and 95 watts again. AMD compared that one to the i7-6800, which has the same frequencies and is certainly a fair comparison. Although we're gonna get to the price again and you'll be kind of surprised. And this time, the 1700X stomped the i7-6800K by 39% in the multi-core benchmark. And again, the price is lower anyway, at $399 for the AMD and $425 for Intel. But get this, the 1700X also beats out the 6900K from before in the multi-threaded mode by 4%. So you have this $400 CPU by AMD that can beat out Intel's $1,000 CPU, at least in multi-threaded applications probably wouldn't do that in single threaded because of the clock speed, but still very impressive. The final CPU to talk about is the 1700, which is promoted as their lower power consumption chip being only 65 watts, and that's got a clock of three gigahertz and a 3.7 boost, still not terrible. And they compare this one to Intel's i7700K, which should really have no excuses since that's the top of Intel's latest Cave Lake generation. Yet again, the Ryzen 1700 beats it by 46% in the multi-threaded benchmarks, certainly due to having twice as many cores, obviously it's not really a surprise. Now given in the single-threaded benchmark, the Intel would definitely win from the higher clock speed. But if you're more looking at the multi-threaded applications, then this is gonna be better, and you guessed it, the 1700 is still cheaper at 329 versus 350, and it's much better at the multi-threaded. 
Okay, so then what does all this mean? It means things are about to get very interesting. For many years now, AMD has gotten the reputation of being the budget hardware manufacturer. Like I mentioned before, they were good if you wanted to get a good computer at an affordable price. But if you wanted the best, you simply had to go Intel. And unfortunately, Intel knew this so they could charge as much as they wanted. But now, I think AMD just made a major disruption to the market. You now have them releasing high-end CPUs that make Intel's prices look laughable. Who in their right mind would buy one of Intel's top-end processors for $1,000 or more if they can buy the same performance for half the price? Now, I like Intel, but it has been very clear to me that they've been massively overcharging, at least in their top-end processors. But to be fair, you can't really complain, I guess, since again, they were the best, and the best costs money. However, I am so glad that AMD is finally showing some teeth. And I can tell you exactly who is going to win in this epic battle between Intel and AMD. Well, we are, the consumer. And you better believe that Intel is starting to sweat a little bit right now. Think about it. Intel has been chugging along with each new incremental generation, getting comfortable charging way more than they really have to. But now you have this other company out of nowhere who undercuts them by half. You're now potentially going to see a nosedive in profit since no one's going to pay more than they have to, obviously. And the way I see it, Intel must do one of two things either lower prices drastically or improve processor performance drastically to justify the higher prices if they're gonna keep them. Oh, and this isn't just about consumer prices, by the way. Intel is extremely popular with computer manufacturers. So you can imagine that these manufacturers might start to question whether they can increase their profits by going AMD and getting cheaper components with zero loss in performance of their products. Really a no-brainer. And that would be a disaster for Intel. Right now, Intel has by far the best brand recognition, I would say, to the point where if you ask any random person on the street what the best CPU is, they'll probably just say an i7 without really going into any more detail than that. I think AMD knows this, and that's why they numbered their tiers the same, the Ryzen 7, the Ryzen 5, and the Ryzen 3 versus i7, i5, i3, in order to make it easier to understand for the average person and to compare them. So here you have AMD positioning itself potentially to be able to cut into Intel's market share big time. And there is no way that Intel wants that to happen. Again, I think this competition will result in Intel lowering their prices to combat this. If Intel wants to charge higher prices, they'll have to make higher performance processors. Therefore, all this competition, I think, is going to result in cheaper processing power in general for everyone, which is obviously a very good thing. Now, you might be thinking that these lower prices are going to be bad for CPU manufacturers. And you might be asking, how are they supposed to innovate more and get all this money for R&D and make more powerful processors if they're going to be making less profit? Not so fast, because here's something you might not be considering. Think about your computer that you're using right now. Maybe it's a few years old and you want to upgrade it. What's stopping you? Probably the price for most people. So what if I told you that building a new computer that can run the games you want at max settings was about to get several hundred dollars cheaper? I'm sure you can see my point. With processor prices going down, I expect to see people upgrading their computers more often. If you've ever taken a basic economics course, you know about the price curve, where as price goes down, quantity of demand goes up. Very simple. And there's obviously a lot more to it, but it does make sense. And if it works out that way, it would be win-win. Companies would still be earning a pretty good profit because they're selling more volume and the consumer would be able to upgrade their systems more often at the same cost. So even though they're making less profit on the individual CPUs, they would hopefully be able to make it up in the volume. Now, in addition to these specific CPUs though that we talked about, AMD is apparently working on some other projects as well, although this isn't really a surprise. We know that they have other businesses that they make besides CPUs. This includes AMD Naples, which will be their server CPU brand, and the AMD Radeon Instinct GPU accelerators, apparently gonna be aimed at machine learning and AI and that sort of thing. But more relevant to our topic today is the Radeon Vega, or is it Vega, GPU line. And this will be AMD's answer to NVIDIA's upcoming GPUs, such as the 1080 Ti. 
If this latest announcement is any type of indicator, I bet we can expect a very similar shakeup of the GPU market if these processors live up to the hype. We could very well be looking at a revolution in computing, ladies and gentlemen, and if you think I'm exaggerating, when is the last time you heard about a price of a thousand dollar product being cut in half overnight? It's as if we kind of skipped an entire cycle of Moore's Law, but instead of the computer power doubling for the same price, it was the inverse. And one might argue that perhaps this isn't the result of AMD making some huge breakthrough, but rather directly from Intel charging too much for their products. And this is just some sort of correction. And I'd say it's a bit of both, but really it doesn't matter. In any case though, I think the main takeaway from all this is that if you're thinking about building a computer sometime in the near future, you should be pretty happy. We'll have to wait a little bit for all the third party reviews to come in to be sure, but it looks like you will be able to get a much better computer than you thought. In addition, it might be better to just hold off on getting a GPU right away as well, since it seems like AMD is looking to shake up that market too. And I guess that's really it. As is typical, we won't know anything for sure right away, but I would like to know what you guys think about all this. Are you someone who's been waiting to upgrade their computer forever? Is this enough to get you to shell out the money for a new one? or perhaps you don't care about CPU performance as long as your computer turns on in the first place. We can discuss all that down in the comments section. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you liked it. And if you wanna keep watching, here's my most recent video. Definitely be sure to check that out. And you can click on that even if you're on a phone. If you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And also consider clicking the bell next to the subscribe button for notifications, or else YouTube probably won't show you the videos otherwise. So again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. Let me know what you think. And as usual, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.